Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about situational awareness. Where are you on the roadway? What's going on? What? Who, who are the road users that are around you? And what strategies and skills do I need to put in place that are going to keep me safe and reduce my chances of being involved in a crash? Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about situational awareness. And it's also Easter weekend. Happy Easter to everyone that's celebrating Easter and that holiday. And hopefully you had a good weekend. That you're not on lockdown. You were able to go and uh, participate in some of the Easter weekend celebrations going on in and around the world and whatnot. Uh, a few people are here. Ben is here. Hello, my friend. Uh, Con is here. How are you? Uh, and all right dc is here as well i was just reading the comment by con there so we can talk about that a little bit later in the question is answer period and uh do all of that goose is here my friend uh goose i did get a, look, a chance to look at the videos that you sent me and we'll talk about that a little bit later but there is you were right there is a truck apron there on those roundabouts that you're getting there in uh Sudbury, that's where you live. I was thinking Sydney for some reason. Couldn't get that out of my head. Anyway, a few people are here, so that's great. And uh, I got a presentation for you tonight. And uh, basically the way that it works after the presentation, uh, I'll do the presentation 10 or 12 minutes, and then after that, and uh, I will answer any questions you have about driving, any questions about defensive driving, getting a license, passing your driver's test, and all of that. And help you out with that. So we'll folk uh, <laughs> having trouble talking right now. Anyway, without further ado, we'll get going on that. And uh, Cargo Five is here. Hello, JT and uh, Corey Bricks for Wheels. Corey is the moderator. He gets all the videos up and does an excellent job of that for any questions that people ask. And I suggest that you have a look at those. So Corey does that, and as well, he keeps the bad people out that you know want to derail us here on the live stream and helping people out. Uh, Margaret, your internet keeps going out. Hello from Brooklyn. And Celine, I have my test in June. Uh, <laughs> yes, God will help you, but you will help yourself and do what you need to do. And you're definitely in the right place, Celine. We can definitely help you out with that. So uh, let's get going with the presentation here. So situational awareness. Where are you on the roadway? Are you in an urban area? Are you in a rural setting where there's going to be uh, farm animals on the roadway and those types of things? Or you in Brooklyn with Margaret and <laughs> dealing with just crazy amounts of traffic, volume, road users, pedestrians, those types of things. So think about all of that uh, when you're driving. For those of you who might be new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s, uh, hauling freight from Ontario, Canada into the United States. And while I was going to university in Australia, I uh, drove buses for Greyhound and one of the regional bus lines there's there as well. So I have experience driving buses as well. I became a licensed commercial driving instructor. That should say 1997, not 1998. But anyway, mute point. Uh, earned my doctorate in legal history in 2006 from the University of Melbourne. I basically looked at the traffic revolution in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Used it as a case study. Essentially what happened from 1890 to 1930 was is that road speeds increased 500%. So it's kind of like saying that in 2060, we'll all be driving around cities at 150 miles an hour, which, you know, for most of us would say, oh, that's somewhat ludicrous. But that's essentially what happened between 1840 and 1930 was there was a 500% increase in road speeds. And in that increase, there was a huge impact on policing and law to try and shore up some ostensible <laughs> some you know safety to have more safety on the roadways because people felt they were in danger and you can check all of that out and more information about me over at the smart drive test website on my autobiography and you know all of that got a little bit into academia there too much gavin's test day video is up i put that up last week a uh, new video uh, for him, and next week we're putting up a video on vehicles with disabilities. I was in Calgary uh, with my friend Nelson. He has a South Trail Driving School there in Calgary, Alberta, and he has vehicles specifically designed for helping people uh, drive with disabilities, and that's going to be next week's video, so look forward to that. 
So situational awareness, everything that we do in life has consequences. It has risks involved with it. Barbecuing out the back has risks. <laughs> if you know you have children around and they touch the hot burner or you touch the hot burner, you're going to burn yourself. So there are risks involved. What are, are you thinking about those inherent risks? And the other thing about it is, is that oftentimes the thing that we think that isn't going to hurt us is the very thing that's going to hurt us. So experience gives us the test and then afterwards it gives us the lesson, which is the kind of the thing <laughs> It's kind of a bummer about experience in life. Uh, and you know, those things that are innocuous, those things that we don't think are going to hurt us. Think of kitchen covers, for example. If you are crouching down in the kitchen and you left one of the doors up top open and you stand up all of a sudden and you crack the top of your head into the corner of the cupboard, you're gonna cut yourself. You know, that is a risk that we're not really thinking about a lot of the time unless you're older and you've done it a couple of times. It's a little bit like driving. Many people after they get their license and, and have had their license for a few months, stop shoulder checking. You come around on a slip lane on a right hand turn, you don't shoulder check and you sideswipe the car beside you because there's a vehicle beside you. Unless you've had that experience, unless you've had a near miss, many times you're not going to shoulder check and then you'll start shoulder checking again because you have that experience. But new drivers and drivers who become complacent after a number of months or years, will stop doing those sorts of things. So those are the types of things that we're talking about in terms of situational awareness. So, and this is one of the things that I would like to kind of have a discussion about after the presentation, because this is one of the things that I've kind of been thinking about a lot in terms of the ebb and flow of traffic. When do you need to pay attention and when don't you need to pay attention or when can you let your attention wane? Because we can't sit behind the steering wheel of a car and be focused kind of, you know, 3,600 seconds an hour, every ounce of our energy being focused on the task of driving. That's simply not a reality for most of us when we're driving. So when can you let your attention wane and how do you stay off the slippery slope of going from, oh, okay, I can kind of let my attention wane and I can, you know, figure out the radio station to, you know, it's okay for me to use cell phones because we don't want to go down that slippery slope of, oh, it's okay to use cell phones because it's not okay to use cell phones. So have you managed space around your vehicle effectively? Uh, what is the traffic? What is the road? What are the vehicles? What are the road users that are around you and those types of things? And is there a place on the roadway that you can allow your attention to, to wane? to, you know, can you not pay attention for a few seconds? Is that going to be okay in the situation that you're in, in terms of situational awareness when you're driving? All right, so it's going to be different for new drivers and drivers working towards a license or those drivers that just got a license because they're not, they don't have enough experience yet driving to know when they can let their attention wane and when they can't. Same thing with CDL drivers, students who are getting a truck driver's license or a bus license. It's the same thing. They got to focus a lot because they're doing a new task when they're driving. Uh, driving instructors as well. When do they have to pay attention to what their students are doing and when can they allow their attention to wane? And for the student, not so much for their attention to wane, but allow the student to work on the very lesson that they've been working on. How can they do all of that? All right. So what is your purpose for learning to drive and get a license? How is all of that working? All right, assessment for learning, and this is for driving instructors when they're taking a new student out and they're working with that student. Uh, you have to figure out where is the student in the learning process? What abilities and skills does the student have and how much information can I give the student and is the student able to take on that information? So do you have a nervous Nelly? Do you have a confident Carl? Uh, and you got to figure out where the student is and, and to get the student to where they need to be in terms of situational awareness uh, for the student. Is the student able to participate in the driving environment that they're in and those types of things? All right. So the driving task and why it's so complicated is because it's made up these six tasks that can kind of come together in any variation that can make one situation completely uh, without risk and another situation can, can be completely dangerous. Uh, the driver, the vehicle, traffic, road, light, and weather. And we can talk about those more during, after the, in, uh, during the question and answer period if you wanna kind of talk about those different things. Uh, so where am I? Are you sitting in traffic? Is it very busy traffic? 
Uh, are you driving on the highway? Are you passing another vehicle? Are you passing another vehicle on a two lane road where other traffic is coming towards you? Are you passing on a multi lane road where traffic is going in the same direction? Or am I passing on a two lane road where the traffic is going in the same direction? but the lane to the right is going to come to an end. So you need to think about all of that while you're driving. Uh, are you still learning to determine gap? What is your own skill set in terms of driving? Are you an experienced driver? Uh, are you comfortable driving? Do you have some anxiety around driving? Or do you are you a new driver and can't quite figure out what gap is and those types of things? So when you're thinking about situational awareness, it's not just where you are in space and place on the roadway, but it's also your own ability in being able to drive. All right. So uh, turning left at complex intersections and somebody, one of the smart drivers asked me this question the other day about information I had given to Gavin when I was teaching him to drive that I said that for new drivers, left hand turns, and it's not just for new drivers, it's for experienced drivers as well, that left hand turns are a high risk maneuver because you're crossing the on the lane you're, you're crossing the path of the oncoming traffic therefore it's high risk you're going to get t-bone t-bone crashes are often fatal so if you misjudge the gap or the oncoming traffic doesn't stop or swerve or take evasive action you're going to be involved in a crash so it's statistically you know it's it's just evidence it's fact that uh, most new drivers are at high risk of being involved in a crash during a left-hand turn so what are the risks? And again, defensive driving situational awareness is all about these four components that we come back to again and again here at Smart Drive Test, which is observation, communicating with other traffic because uh, traffic, it's social driving, it's participating in a social activity. It's not just what you do, but it's what other drivers do as well. Uh, space management, are you managing space around your vehicle? And again, we come back to the point that you can always, always, always manage space in front of your vehicle. You should always, at minimum, if you're following in a queue or stopped at in a line of traffic, that you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement. And you should always have a, a minimum following distance of sort of three to six seconds. And then speed is kind of the last piece of the puzzle. And unfortunately, you know, lots of traffic safety authorities like to say that, oh, speed is responsible for crashes and this and that. No, speed is responsible for the severity of crashes because if you if speed was responsible for it, we wouldn't have highways and interstates where we can drive at 100 kilometers an hour or 65 miles an hour because if speed was responsible for crashes, uh, these places, interstates and, and freeways would have a lot more crashes when in fact they don't. All right, so the ebb and flow of a driving lesson, the ebb and flow of driving are one and the same thing. Okay, what is expected of you? And again, here's a perfect picture of weather and how weather can affect uh, your driving ability, uh, your driving confidence, uh, and weather can combine with light. So it can be dark and it can be snowy and windy and blizzard conditions, and it can be just terrible, awful driving conditions. Okay, so think about situational awareness as a driving instructor or if you are a mentor and think about teaching moments that you can impart to the student because oftentimes the way that we teach driving is, is it's actual in the vehicle. It's very experiential. It's to what's happening outside of the windshield. And for most of you who've been here and watched a number of my videos, you'll know that the way that I teach is, is that it's in response to what's going on in the driving environment outside of the vehicle. The best uh, kind of teaching that I do is in response to the what's going on around me uh, when I'm driving and filming those videos and whatnot. All right, so experiential, where to focus, develop habits that will protect you. And we talk about this again and again and again, that you put in place skills and strategies that will keep you safe. Maybe not today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, but maybe 12 years from now, that skill or habit that you developed and kept in place is going to keep you safe, i.e. shoulder checking, for example. Okay, new drivers, young drivers who are kind of in that kind of 18 to 22 bracket are dealing with the four Ds all at the same time. Drinking, driving, dating, and distracted driving. And these are the four big ones. And for new drivers, new newly licensed drivers, they don't have any experience with any one of these, unfortunately, okay? 
So communication and observation are cornerstones of learning how to drive and continuing to drive safely and reducing risk because looking far down the road and figuring out what situational awareness is, what's the traffic flow, what are the vehicles that make up uh, the road user group around you and those types of things. So uh, there's also a bit of a study here that I did uh, some time ago where it talks about experience that a lot of people just don't have a lot of experience uh, with driving and this is the reason that they tend to get into trouble when they're driving. All right, so that's kind of that. We can talk more about this uh, in question and answer here and I kind of want to talk a little bit more about situational awareness and the ebb and flow of traffic and when can we when do we need to pay more attention and when when can we kind of let our attention wane a little bit so remember pick the best answer not necessarily the right answer all right so transitioning over there excellent uh my friend goose uh the name of my first driving instructor's business was focused driver training <laughs> there you go yes very apropos um okay Carlita, left turns are the worst, and yes, I would agree. Uh, Macbul, very informative. Thank you, my friend. Margaret, late afternoon driving for me is the worst with the sun blinding me, and every time I mess with the visor, I'm worried I will lose control of the vehicle. And yes, Margaret, uh, you know, sunset and sunrise are the most dangerous, and the reason for that is due to the fact that you have a very bright sky and you have a dark landscape and our eyes are adjusted to the bright sky so things get lost in the dark landscape and there was there's a perfect example of that i actually i caught one on the dash cam the other day where i just pulled out of my driveway and there's two kids on bicycles going across the intersection and same thing glaring sun right in my eye and i like for a minute the the cyclist completely disappeared in the glaring sun and in the dark landscape and that's what happens and you're absolutely right uh margaret that it's really tough at the, those times of day sunset and sunrise and especially when you got that glaring sun hitting you right in the eyes and i you know i've had a few times in my life where i've had to drive into the setting sun or the rising sun for like half an hour it's not so bad with the rising sun because it's just coming up over the horizon but the setting sun i find is much worse and where i've been driving into that for like a half an hour and it is exhausting it's, but even with sunglasses on and the visor down it's still really you know it really fatigues you so i i get you uh ben how do you not focus too much behind me for tailgaters rick uh ben again this this kind of comes back to one of the tenets of driving is is that you got to focus on what you're doing uh and if you're just you're looking in that center mirror all the time and you're worried about the people that are behind you you're not going to be looking uh, down the road and focus on what's going on in front of you and if you do have tailgaters you want to increase the following distance in front of your vehicle because remember you're now driving not only your vehicle but you're driving for that goofball behind you as well so know that as well okay uh macbool i am uh, interested to apply for a truck license do you have related videos on youtube uh yes kindly share uh macbool yes there's a whole series here on what to expect at truck driving school and Corey will put that playlist up for you. You can have a look at that as well. Harmel, uh, could you please make video on all road signs? Thanks, uh, Harmel. We have a few, uh, we have a playlist on uh, road signs. Corey will put that up for you. You can have a look at those. Uh, major classifications of signs. The most important thing you need to know about traffic signs is that these convey information in three ways. So the shape of the sign, the colors, uh, you know, so regulatory signs for the most part are rectangular in shape with a white background with black lettering on them. Uh, also know that stop signs, railway crossing signs, and school signs are also regulatory. Uh, no, school signs are not regulatory. They're in their own class of their own. But there are some exceptions to the regulatory signs. You know, cautionary signs are usually diamond in shape with a yellow background with black lettering. So the three ways, again, I kind of got lost there a little bit, but the three ways that signs convey inf information, the shape, the colors, and the writing or symbols thereon. Okay, so those are the three ways that traffic signs convey information. My friend Mallory, how are you? Yes, look where you want the car to go, exactly. <laughs> uh, and this is not only important for new drivers, but I've taught this again and again with uh, CDL drivers 
uh, driving truck that the truck will go where you are looking and you need to look where you want the vehicle to go and if you're going around a curve you need to be looking through the curve the cur the truck or the vehicle will go where you're looking <laughs> and this is again uh, some new drivers when they're shoulder checking are having difficulty shoulder checking because what's happening uh, and they say okay well I'm looking left and then the vehicle goes left and what's happening is they're holding their shoulder check too long instead of a quick glance they're going like this and because they're more than a second looking in this direction the vehicle starts to go in that direction so that's what happens with uh, shoulder checking so try that Jim Bob hello my friend uh, <laughs> Ben you have been around here long enough my friend that social driving you know what social driving is people don't stop at stop signs they don't signal when they change lanes they you know if you're very lucky like what you were just saying Ben you get one signal when they're changing lanes that's just part of social driving it's not a matter of if that's gonna happen it's just a matter of when it's gonna happen because it is going to happen my friend and it's just a matter of keeping your space it's managing your space having that two to three second following distance between you and other vehicles so when cars do that it's not a big deal okay so know that all right um, <laughs> why are people so rude to new drivers it's not just you Ben people are rude period okay so know that when it comes to driving all right and as we talked about previously we'll just put this up here for you is it up here no I don't think it I didn't see it there we go okay so shirts are available and as I said we only have one at this point I'm still waiting for my graphic designer to do a couple of things for me but definitely check those out and as I said last week I did reduce the price because I think thirty dollars for a t-shirt thirty dollars plus is too much for a t-shirt so they're in the mid twenty dollars uh, and even American I think they're less than that so check those out if you're interested have a look at the t-shirts there that's really great okay uh, Baines I've learned a lot from this channel thank you you're most welcome my friend Chauncey I uh, just wanted to say your videos helped me to get my license and now they're helping me learn even more going into a moving truck driving job uh, thank you for videos and being awesome and thank you so much for Chauncey for your kind words and, and stopping back and letting us know that you passed your driver's test that's really awesome uh, you Jim Bob you filmed your first fire truck uh, what what was the fire truck doing was was it responding to an emergency uh, Mac Bull, if there is only one lane and I am driving at permitted speed but if someone is tailgating me should I increase my speed or keep driving at the same speed uh, Mac Bull, do you have your driver's license at this point or are you working towards your driver's test let me know that Rocky hello you hello my friend how are you there in Windsor in lockdown yet again and we're in lockdown here in British Columbia as well they've closed all the restaurants you can't go out and sit in a restaurant any longer they've closed all the sports and fitness centers and all those types of things I'm just like I don't know when this is gonna you know it's been more than a year now <laughs> and, and I'm actually on video I can't deny this a year ago more than a year ago when they first did this I said uh, this can't last for more than a couple of weeks well boy was I wrong here we are a week uh, a year later Nadia uh, Rick I was ex exiting the parking lot into the main street I turned right in that main street and this black Dodge Charger behind me out of the blue and it thought that I uh, quickly stopped okay so everything was good excellent uh, Ben is downshifting okay for a road test no it's really not uh, Ben you want to have a look at the video on oh different Ben <laughs> sorry Ben uh, Ben are you driving a manual transmission or are you driving an automatic transmission let me know that uh, Mallory don't turn left with somebody in the crosswalk yes absolutely thank you Mallory Chauncey uh, never received a ticket awesome uh, Ben Ben Lyson no I'm not talking to you <laughs> different Ben my apologies okay uh, okay Harmel can you make a sign for CDL drivers we have one of those two Harmel Corey I'll put that up for you top 12 signs for truck drivers have a look at that JT about the presentation which driving conditions under the driving task slide should new drivers uh, when uncomfortable on the road uh, JT can you reword that I'm not quite following that okay excellent 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 uh, okay so JT you just got your license now I'm trying to feel more comfortable when driving 
and to be a defensive driver, awesome. Uh, JT, the other thing you might want to consider, and this is for all the smart drivers watching now or watching on the replay, uh, defensive driving is available over at the Smart Drive Test website. And for those of you here now, all the smart drivers here, don't tell anyone else, but if you use the coupon SMART30, you'll get 30% off the, disc off the uh, defensive driving course over at the Smart Drive Test website. Corey will put the link up for that. So 30% off, use the coupon uh, SMART30 and that'll get you 30% off the defensive driving course. And of course, if you buy any of the courses over at the Smart Drive Test website, uh, you have access to me. They're all completely guaranteed. If you are not satisfied within three weeks, simply send me an email, no questions asked, I'll refund your money, okay? So have a look at those. All right, uh, there you go. Critical signs, 11 critical signs for CDL bus and truck drivers. Thank you, Corey, for getting that up. Excellent, and Corey's put the video up on how to downshift a manual car, which basically I say that you shouldn't anymore. Uh, you do have to shift down for the appropriate gear for the speed, but when I'm talking about downshifting is basically when you're coming up to a stop and those types of things, you don't have to downshift. Uh, if you're coming up to a corner, just leave it in fourth gear, bring it down to the speed that you need to go around the corner. Uh, most manual transmission cars are gonna be second gear on a right-hand turn second maybe third on a left hand turn so you just bring it down to the speed which is going to be you know 20 kilometers an hour 30 kilometers an hour for second gear uh you know 15 or 20 miles an hour and dump it into second gear and go around the corner uh rocky i'm not sure how many buildings are total lockdown but must say um and i think most of the restaurants as well in my town in windsor ontario yeah it's basically the same here as what they've done rocky uh, JT, which driving conditions under the new driving task presentation slide should new drivers use when uncomfortable on the road? Okay, all right. So uh, when you're not comfortable on the road, JT, what I suggest for new drivers is to try and stay out of rush hour, okay? So don't go out in the morning when you know that everybody's going to work between kind of 8 and 10 in the morning and drive in rush hour because it's just too crazy. Same thing in the afternoon, kind of between 3 and 6. Try not to drive on the main roads during those times because it's just going to be too busy. You know, try and drive during the daytime. Uh, if you do want to get some night driving experience, go out. You know, again, most roads aren't going to be too busy at night in the early evening and those types of things. But, you know, and again, if you want to try and get more experience in different traffic situations and whatnot, what I recommend for new drivers trying to get more confident is to go with a mentor, go with somebody that you trust uh, and have them kind of give you some tips and some advice while you're driving and say, hey, maybe you try this or try this or look there, you know, observe this, signal earlier, those types of things. And that will really help you out to kind of gain confidence uh, after you get your license and are, you know, building your ability, your skills and abilities as a driver. Okay. Okay, Ben, I had downshift approaching a turn only. Well, have a, just have a look at the video and see what works for you, Ben. I'm not advocating one way or the other. Okay. Uh, Margaret, driving school, told me the DMV website was down for over a week. Couldn't access to book a driver's test. Oh, my God. And, you know, not to mention that the website's down, Margaret, but also probably the the they're, they're probably backed up for at least another two years to get a driver's test. I, I just, you know, I cannot, I can't even imagine how, how long you have to wait for a driver's test there in New York City now with just all this craziness that's going on. Uh, ben, is manual transmission easy to drive? Uh, ben, it'll drive you crazy for about the first two months. And then after the first couple of months, you probably don't want to ever drive an automatic transmission again. At least that's my experience with driving manual transmissions. Uh, Jim Bob, are regulatory signs a hazard? Uh, no, Jim Bob, regulatory signs, regulatory means regulation, which means it's the law that you must obey regulatory signs or whatever is written on them, okay? Baines, uh, can you please make a video on driving Canadian harsh winter conditions? Uh, what could be done if someone gets stuck in harsh snowstorm in Northern Canada? Thanks in advance. Uh, Bain, uh, I can do better than that. We have an entire winter driving course. And if you're just going to get your license now, you could pick up, Corey's put the link up there for the Smarter Driver course package, which includes the winter driving course as well. Or you can buy the winter driving course independently over at the Smart Drive Desk website. And again, like I said, just for the people here watching this live stream, 
SMART30 will give you 30% off on the courses over at the Smart Drive Test website. So check the winter driving course out and that will give you more information than just the winter driving videos that are available here on the YouTube channel, okay? All right. Uh, Lucas, would you fail a driving exam with heel and toe shifting? Uh, Lucas, that's totally for racing. It's not for driving a car uh, during a, a driver's test. Uh, I think it would be very unlikely that you would pass a driver's test if you're doing toe heel. Uh, because that's for racing and uh, hopefully you're not going that fast on a driver's test. Uh, Nadia, when is it okay to start slowing down before a right turn? Uh, Nadia, you want to start kind of slowing down approximately half a block before the turn. That's kind of a general rule though and if you're having trouble and this isn't just for Nadia, this is for all of the new smart drivers out there who are learning how to drive. If you're having difficulty determining how far away from a an intersection that you should start slowing down, then I really encourage you to go back to the parking lot and do some slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot with some pylons and those types of things. That will really uh, increase your mastery of the primary controls because you need, you know, you need to be able to use the steering wheel, the brake and the throttle without thinking about it. Once, once you move out onto the roadway and you know, unfortunately this is one of the failings that I see of of driver education as a whole right now, just regardless of where it is in the world, is, is that we don't start new drivers off in parking lots with pylons. And the reason I say this, and I was thinking about this last week, when I grew up and probably when Goose started driving as well and, and your parents, we all lived on farms, we all, we, we grew up with riding lawnmowers and cutting the grass and driving tractors and those types of things. I grew up, I was, I was driving riding lawnmowers when I was like eight years old. I was working on a farm when I was 12 years old. I was driving tractors. I was riding a mini bike, those types of things. So I had a lot of driving experience when I came to get my driver's test. What's happened now is because we've moved into 75% of the world's population now lives in cities. Most of you as new drivers have never been in a car before. You have very little driving experience. You haven't, you, you may have ridden your bicycle, but you haven't driven a tractor. You haven't driven a lawn tractor and those types of things. So most new drivers who get in a car, and this is, I'm really speaking to the driving instructors now. So they have no experience whatsoever, zero experience with driving a vehicle other than watching their parents do it, which completely bamboozles most new drivers because they think, oh, well, they can do it. And it's not that hard. It's kind of like when <laughs> truck driving students watch me drive a big truck and they're like, oh, that's not that hard. And then they get behind the wheel like, oh my God, this is just incredibly hard. So the disservice that most driving instructors do, and I understand that there's limitations with Margaret and Brooklyn and those types of things. You know, there just aren't places that you can go and do slow speed maneuvers, but there should be, right? And so we need to get these new drivers in a parking lot so that they can get mastery of the primary controls and figure out where the vehicle is in space and place and how to work the steering wheel and how much to push down on the throttle and how much to push down on the brake. Because most new drivers who get behind the wheel of a vehicle have no idea about any of that. They have no idea about any of that. And we really need to do that with them so that we can accelerate their learning so that when they do get out in traffic, they're not asking you these questions of how far do, from the intersection do I need to be start slowing down? How much do I need to turn the steering wheel to go around the corner and those types of things? So if you want to really, really help your student out, spend a couple of hours in the parking lot with them and get them to do these exercises, these beginner exercises that I have up as part of uh, you know, the slow speed maneuvers and the beginner driver uh, playlist there. Uh, Margaret grew up in New York City, parents didn't drive. There you go, exactly what Margaret just said. She's, she's been in New York City her whole life and her parents never drove. You have access to public transit, so why are you driving? It's the same thing. I lived in Melbourne, Australia for seven years and I rode my bicycle everywhere or I took public transit. Why would I own a car when you know oh, I could go and hire a car if I wanted to go out of town or go to the, the country that's basically what I did was I hired a car I you know I never owned a car while I was in Melbourne which did me a disservice in terms of insurance when I came back to Canada but <laughs> that's what happened 
Uh, Goose, I do that with some of uh, my less experienced drivers. First lesson in the parking lot. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Mantis, finding parking lots is hard sometimes. My students in the city are sometimes a 20-minute drive away from a safe, empty parking lot, and it cuts into lesson time if they're not able to drive yet. Uh, Mantis, um, what about church parking lots and those types of things? Because generally during the week, there isn't anybody in a church parking lot, and they don't really mind you going in there and doing a bit of work and whatnot. Is that is that an option? I mean, generally the places that I find parking lots... Uh, church parking lots, uh, mall parking lots, because, you know, in the morning or other times, mall parking lots aren't busy. But like you said, you know, some of these people, they just don't. It's It really depends where you are in those types of things as well. So it's, I there yes, there are limitations. There are places that you can't, you know, you don't have access to them for sure. Uh, Bazzi, uh, how do you do parallel parking when there is traffic behind you? Some people may also be honking the horn. Uh, Ramazi, uh, as long as you've got the vehicle in, the, you've come to a stop beside the vehicle that you're going to parallel park off, you, you stop, put the transmission into reverse, which will activate your backup lights and you've got your signal on as you're approaching, you're going to signal to the right. Other vehicles will either wait for you to parallel park or they will go around you. So as long as you've communicating to other traffic that that's in fact what you're going to be doing and you have your reverse lights on and you have your signal on, uh, you're going to be fine. Okay, uh, Mantis, church parking lots. Excellent. I'm glad we could definitely help out. Uh, the other thing, Mantis, that I uh, places that I go are recreation centers. Uh, ice hockey arenas and, and those types of things have uh, empty parking lots. Uh, we have an old racetrack here in town that has an empty parking lot that you could potentially work there. Uh, and then, of course, there's always dead-end streets. You know, if you've got a cul-de-sac or something like that, you know, maybe you go there for 20 minutes before somebody kicks you out and whatnot. So, you know, some some ideas. Uh, Chauncey, my biggest problem driving a box truck is left turns in the middle lane where I have to maneuver in between traffic. It's really hard to gauge where the truck is when turning in such a tight space. Uh, Chauncey, again, the other thing with a box truck is you might want to go into the parking lot and work with some of those pylons because that'll help you figure out kind of where your vehicle is in space and place. And the other thing with commercial vehicles and box trucks, Chauncey, is when you get into those tight places, you really, really want to go slow, okay? So you can, you got time to maneuver, time to observe and those types of things. Jocelyn, uh, try movie theater parking lots. Yes, that's excellent as well. Uh, Irfan, uh, sir, my question, please answer. It's at the top of the live chat. Uh, Irfan, yes, you were talking about failing on a driver's test for a left-hand turn. I can't comment because I wasn't there, okay? I know that you're upset. It's It sucks that you passed, your, you failed your driver's test, and that's the feedback that the examiner gave you. <sighs> it sucks. So what I would suggest to you is, and, and it's it's tough to get any sort of, uh, like if you have a go and you, you, you want to say the examiner was wrong and you want to contest that, that's what I was trying to say, you want to contest that, it's not likely you're going to win. It's better to put your energy into doing your retest. And the other thing with a retest is you're going to get a different driving examiner. You're not going to get the same driving. It's, it's unlikely you're going to get the same driving examiner unless it's a really small DMV center. So... Corey, I'll put the video up for you on what to do if you fail your driver's test. I know it sucks. I really do. Uh, but put your energy in doing your test again and pass and get your license the next time, okay? Don't let somebody else's opinion of you become your reality. And that's basically what it is. It's somebody's opinion, unfortunately, that's in a position of power that caused you to fail your driver's test, okay? Uh Goose, I love dead end streets that have loop arounds for teaching hand over hand. Yes, excellent. Margaret, the only parking lot here in the Staples McDonald's Auto Parts one, and it's always full. And yeah, no, Margaret, I can, <laughs> I've been in Brooklyn. Uh, I know how limited space is there. And I mean, many of the businesses in the industrial areas, they are working out on the streets because there just isn't enough room uh, for any of that to go on. So I can understand the limitations there. Uh Ben, what tires go good for Honda CRV? Uh, ben, I'm a Michelin person, but somebody told me that Michelin stopped making tires for the Honda CRV. But if somebody could just go on the Michelin site and see if there are tires for the Honda CRV, uh, that would be especially helpful. 
Uh, Rick, uh, learn to drive in a parking lot, malls, schools, and churches. Also, distracted driving is hazardous. hazardous. Leave the phone alone until you're parked. Yes, if we could do that, that would be really great. Uh, reducing distractions and whatnot. Uh, Jim Bob, I heard today that a train in Taiwan crashed. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunate when they do crash. It's kind of, it's a bite like planes and those types of things. Okay, so Corey's put the video up on, I failed my driver's test, so have a look at that. That'll help you out as well if you were unsuccessful on your driver's test. Okay, JT, but most mall parking lots are secluded and far away from everything, and that is true. They are quite a distance from other places and whatnot, and you certainly, if you're, uh, as Mantis and other people have said, as driving instructors, you know, you can't spend 10 minutes driving to a mall parking lot to get, uh, you know, to have your students working in parking lots and those types of things. However, all of the information is here on the channel with the videos on beginning driving and those types of things. And, you know, mentors, if you are mentoring a new driver, you're the parents helping your kids to learn to drive to get their license and those types of things, you can do those exercises with your student. They're not, they're not hard. And, uh, you can just look at the videos here for beginner drivers. You can figure out what the exercises are. You can head over to the Smart Drive Test website. Uh, there's a checklist for learner drivers that has the exercises there that will show you exactly what the exercise is. It'll give you a PDF, and you can do those as well. And you know, talk to the driving instructor, and he or she may have some additional exercises that you could do with you know the learner driver to help them. Uh, become more comfortable with the vehicle and figuring out where it is in space and place. Uh, <laughs> Goose says, no no shortage of parking lots in my neck of the woods. Yeah, definitely there. And uh, the stepping off point to Northern Ontario in Sudbury. Uh, Jim Bob, why should you do uh, an emergency, if an emergency vehicle is behind you on a one-way street and you just can't pull to the left or the right? Uh, Jim Bob, the best option then is to just stop let the emergency vehicle figure out what it's going to do, what the, the driver will figure out what he or she is going to do. You just stop and then that way you're not going to be not going to be impeding the emergency vehicle behind you. Uh, ben, it's so hard to wait to get my car next year. How do I remain calm until I get my car? <laughs> ben, just put a picture of it on the wall and imagine that you've already got it. It's going to come, my friend. Abbasi, uh, is it common to be confused if you have to brake hard or accelerate fast if the light turns yellow? What do you do then? Uh, it's a sp split second decision and some people may find it difficult. Abbasi, yes, uh, no doubt that new drivers, experienced drivers, those upgrading to a CDL license, yes, it's always uh, difficult to deal with yellow lights. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's a challenging skill. And you need a bit of experience with yellow lights when you're learning how to drive with a driving instructor, those types of things to learn how to handle them. Uh, as well, Corey will put the video up for you on uh, how to deal with yellow lights and that will help you out. And if you have any further questions, definitely let me know and whatnot, okay? Uh, up there about winter tires and when to change them or whether I can uh, do it in the summertime. Okay, so DC, thank you for remind the reminder on the question. Um, DC, 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 DC. When we should we, when I change the summer all season tires. Okay, so DC, excellent. Thank you for reminding me that. Uh, Any time now is fine. As long as you're not going to get snow again. And even if you do get a bit of snow, you know, you're going to be okay with your all season tires on your vehicle. Uh, I changed mine last week. I took my winter tires off. You really don't want to be, and this is an excellent question. This is an ep excellent topic. You really don't want to be driving around with your winter tires if there isn't any snow. And, you know, it really only gets down to around freezing because uh, winter tires are a soft rubber compound. And because it's a soft rubber compound, you will wear them out exponentially once it's dry pavement and it's, it's warm out because they're so soft the, the pavement will just chew them up. So uh, you're really doing yourself a disservice and you're gonna, really gonna wear them out. So, you know, if you can get them off now, that's the best thing to do. And <laughs> I did a video on it too. I just haven't put the video up, but it's probably a good time to put the video up and say, hey, you need to uh, take yours off. And uh, Goose says he took his off, uh, his are studded. Uh, personally, I don't like studded tires. The reason I don't like studded tires is because I find them really noisy, especially on the buggy. 
uh, which is 20 years old. So, uh, yes, the, it, I've had studded tires. And let me tell you, I couldn't wait to get them off the vehicle <laughs> because they're just, they're noisy. So that's the reason, that's my personal feeling about uh, studded tires. However, if I was driving up and down the mountain or I was driving on hard pack every day, then yes, I would absolutely have studded tires on my vehicle. Okay. Uh, JT, question about the steering wheel. Uh, hold my steering wheel after I get my road test. After you get your license, one and nine and three makes me feel stiff. Uh, let me tell you one thing, uh, JT, about steering wheel control after you get your license. <laughs> that I don't think there's anybody after they get their license that holds the steering wheel like this. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I've got video of me driving and I'm basically one finger. That whole nine and three thing comes from racing. And, you know, when you're racing and you're pushing your vehicle to the limit, then yeah, two hands on the steering wheel. Uh, you know, or the other thing that we do that in terms of driving tests and whatnot is because we do it because 50 years ago, a lot of cars didn't have power steering. Now all the cars have power steering. They have stability control. I mean, you can let go of the steering wheel going down the highway in a straight line and that thing will just like dead straight down the road. Cars weren't, didn't used to be like that, but this is what we teach uh, for new drivers getting a driver's license, two hands on the wheel, 10 and two, blah, 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 yeah, nah, nah, smack you with a ruler kind of thing. You know, uh, very few experienced drivers after getting a license have two hands on the steering wheel. <laughs> okay, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, ben, how slow should you go around a corner without a posted speed limit restriction? Uh, ben, are you just like talking about in town, uh, around corners and those types of things? Uh, Margaret, if you live in a place that doesn't get a lot of snow, do you still need uh, winter tires? Uh, Margaret, I've, if you don't get a lot of snow, then no. Uh, all season tires will do just fine for you in the winter time, especially for what you get there in New York, maybe one or two times. And I mean, even if it does snow there in New York, you're probably not going to go out anyway. You take public transit or whatnot. Uh, I've had a number of winters where I haven't changed out the winters. Uh, because I couldn't afford it or whatnot. And uh, I went up through the mountain pass there last fall, excuse me, and we got a freak snowstorm in October. And I had the all-season tires on the on the buggy, and the buggy was just fine. But, you know, again, there's no doubt about it that, that winter tires are specifically designed for winter and will give you incredibly improved traction. So if you do get a lot of snow, a lot of cold, and those types of things, then definitely consider putting winter tires on your vehicle and, you know, a set of four. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Abassi, have you ever worked as an Uber or Lyft driver? Just curious. Uh, Abassi, I worked as a taxi driver uh, years and years ago. <laughs> uh, you know, figure youth, dropped out of university, didn't know what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, got a job driving taxi, worked, started part-time, and then it ended up full-time, and then I realized that, you know, there wasn't a lot of money in driving taxi. It wasn't really my calling. Uh, uh, Jim Bob, what ha, what do you do if your vehicle stalls in the intersection? Uh, take a breath, restart the engine, get it into gear, and get it going again. That's basically what you do. My friend Epic, how are you? Uh, school driveway meeting a through road is a dangerous type. Uh, one of those is Stewartville. Okay. Yes, and there's lots of intersections uh, with uh, those types of things. Yes, very, have to be safe. Uh, forgot about the California slicks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, JT, unrelated question. Do you know how to drift in a car? Uh, not on dry pavement. I can't say that I do, no. Uh, you know parking lots and snow and those types of things. Yeah, lots of fun. Uh, Mesri, uh, what's the correct action to do if there's a crash in the middle of an intersection to go around? Uh, if there's a crash in the middle of the intersection, uh, Mesri, oftentimes there's going to be first responders there and they will direct traffic around the crash. Uh, if you can't get around safely without endangering any of the people that are there, because obviously if there's a crash, there's going to be people, you know, occupants of the vehicle out and kind of wandering around the crash scene so what i would suggest is if you can't go past safely then just turn the corner and find another way around uh, until the first responders there get there and those types of things okay uh goose i drove hack on the weekends when i needed the extra cash and yes <laughs> uh goose i drove this is how old i am i drove 
cab in London, Ontario, the year uh, when the Toronto Blue Jays won the World Series twice in a row. So uh, somebody here on the channel and somebody watching the replay may know what years that was, but they won back-to-back -back World Series, and it was it was crazy. It was a, just a crazy night that night uh, that they won the World Series. Uh, L Wheel, uh, hey Rick, I'm taking driver classes, but I don't have anyone to help me outside of driver school. Do you think I'm still able to learn how to drive? Uh, you will learn how to drive, but it's going to be a little bit tough for you. And I would really suggest that, you know, get somebody, pay somebody so you can get some more driving experience and those types of things. Do you know any, uh, seniors who have cars that don't drive that need somebody to drive them to groceries and those types of things? There's always somebody that has a car that will help you out. So, you know, uh, if you can get some experience outside of just your driving lessons, it's really going to help you out for sure. <coughs> Uh, Abassi, is YouTube your full-time job now? Yes, it is. Uh, YouTube has been my full-time job now for three years, and uh, it's getting better and better for sure uh, because I'm generating, I'm creating some revenue streams outside of uh, YouTube and just the, you know, the money from advertising and those types of things and, uh, you know, some professional contracts and those types of things. I have a client right now in the States, one of the big trucking companies that I'm doing some safety training for. So, yeah, it's uh, it's great. And, you know, I love it. And uh, it's given me a lot of free time to do things that I want to do. But, you know, it's it's a lot of work, too. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a great job. So, and, you know, we're building a team, too. We have people that are now helping us with comments. I've hired a camera person and, uh, you know, accountants, lawyers, bookkeepers. So the team is beginning to grow in terms of YouTube and the Smart Drive Test channel. And you know, it's this is all because of the smart drivers out there uh, that have made this possible. And it's it's been really great, really, really great. Uh, uh, 1992 and 93 that the uh, Blue Jays won back-to-back -back World Series. So those were the years I was driving taxi cab. <laughs> okay. Uh, Baines, uh, is there a video on highway entry exit loop kind of roads? I believe those loops seem confusing and a sort of too much information for new drivers. Uh, Baines, are you talking about entry? Uh, what am I trying to say? On ramp, off ramps that are one and the same. Is that what you're talking about? I think that's what you're talking about. Omar, I just got my driver's license this past Friday and I got uh, two out of 14 wrong and I passed here in California. Uh, no, that is an excellent number. Uh, any number that allows you to pass Omar is an excellent number. So congratulations on passing your driver's test. That is absolutely awesome. Congratulations on that. Uh, JT, is it true that the left lane on a highway is only for speeding? <laughs> no, that's not true at all, JT. But it is for passing. And remember the regulatory sign that says uh, stay right unless passing, okay? Abassi, glad to hear that you are enjoying the job and are able to do the things that you like to do. Uh, absolutely, Abassi. And the other thing about it, Abassi, is, is, you know, one of the key words of the channel is empowerment. It's really about me helping and empowering other people to drive and drive safely and have fun doing it because driving is a lot of fun. So that's, that's really what we're trying to do here. Okay, excellent. Lots of people know when the Blue Jays won the World the World Series back to back. <laughs> I can always go to my friend Tim's place, uh, and Tim's on the Smart Drive Test team too because Tim does the IT stuff for me, and uh, Tim has a, a YouTube channel, uh, Basic Joomla Tutorials. So he basically does websites and those types of things. Um, Abassi, I commented on a video of yours years ago, and then you responded, and then I told my dad that I was famous uh, because someone with 100,000 subscribers responded. <laughs> That's awesome, Abassi. Uh, yes, some of us who have 100,000 subscribers actually do respond and I actually, you know, I don't get to all the comments that I should, but I do try to get to as many as I can and help people out. Okay. Uh, Jim Bob, sometimes always have a minimum and maximum. If there is a minimum and maximum must be between them. Okay, not following that what you're asking but anyway uh karthik uh how to determine when the end of school zone or 30 kilometer an hour zone uh karthik you have to look for the back of the pentagon sign at the other end of the speed zone and uh 
Corey put the video up on what am I know? Uh, which one? Actually, the mock driving test is the one you want for that. And you just basically look for the back of the other sign because there isn't any end school zone sign, especially here in British Columbia. Uh, and that's usually how you know that you're at the end of the school zone sign. Krista, happy to catch you live, Rick. I needed this video. Krista, you're most welcome. Happy to hear we can help out. Chelsea, is driving in Canada different than in the USA? Uh, Chelsea, no, not a great deal. And as well, Chelsea, uh, most of the information, almost all of the information here on the channel is actually geared towards driving in the United States of America, okay? So, and if you have any specific questions about the state that you're in or any specific rules, uh, we can definitely help you out with that because obviously, you know, states like Ohio have the Ohio maneuverability test. Uh, California has, uh, doesn't have parallel parking, but you have to back up 50 feet in a straight line along a curb. And then there's the state of Maryland, which you have to do a two point reverse turn as opposed to parallel parking. Uh, however, it's up to the discretion of the examiner. And then of course, now with COVID, some states are doing closed circuit testing. For example, uh, Pennsylvania is doing closed circuit testing. Uh, Georgia is doing closed circuit testing. Texas depends, you know, there are some private uh, driving schools that are administrating the tests and those types of things. Washington State is the same. Uh, private driving schools are administering the tests and whatnot. So if you have any specific questions for anybody watching now on this or watching on the replay, just send me a question, ask me a question and those types of things. As well, Corey, I'll put up the link for you on frequently asked questions. Head over to the Smart Drive Test website. Click the menu item, frequently asked questions, and there's a list of frequently asked questions specifically about your state or province, and that will help you out as well, okay? So, Chelsea, you live in New York. Excellent. Okay, so New York, not a great lot, of, not a lot of difference uh, in the state of New York. Uh, sorry, Chelsea, you live in New York or New York City? Not, not that it really matters. There's not a great deal of uh, difference uh, for those two things. But know that Unless otherwise posted, the speed limit in New York is 25 miles an hour. Uh, speed limit on highways and freeways is going to be 50 miles an hour and those types of things. Corey's put the link up for frequently asked questions, so definitely check that out. But Chelsea, definitely all of the information here on the channel will help you to get your license there in uh, New York, regardless of whether you live in the city or you live in the state. Okay. Uh, Mallory, just wondering if you would do any videos on bus driving. Uh, Mallory, I just talked to Gavin today who I hired as my camera person and I said to him the, the videos we're going to do here in the next few weeks uh, we are going to do a license test a mock license test for every class of license so we're going to do one for motorcycles passenger vehicles uh, taxis ambulances and small buses which is uh, less than 25 passengers we're gonna do a school bus. We're gonna do, uh, and we're gonna do tractor trailers. So those are in the, in the, um, what what's the what's the lingo that they use? Those are coming down the pike. Is that the lingo? No, those are in the hopper. <laughs> I think that's how bureaucrats like to say it. We got that in the hopper. <laughs> bureaucrats. Oh my God, this is so crazy. Okay, so Chelsea, you're in Rochester, two hours from Canada. Yes, uh, so yes, Rochester is an awesome place. Finger Lakes, I had a vacation there once, really awesome. So Chelsea, yes, all of the information here on the channel is gonna help you get your license there in Rochester. And if you have any questions, uh, the only one of the things that I can tell you right off the top of my head in Rochester that's different is that the exit numbers on the Interstate 90 there do not match the mile markers. They are independent of that, which is a little bit weird, but it's all good. Uh, Margaret, yes, Gavin did pass his driver's test. Excellent. And uh, you can see that there in the last video. Just go to the end. <laughs> I do a little summary and said, yay, Gavin passed his driver's test. All right. Uh, Epic, speaking of uncontrolled intersections on a parking lot meeting a main road, is it okay to treat it like a yield or because uh, they're high risk of getting T-bone crashed when they tend to ignore? Uh, okay, so yes. Epic, so if you're coming out of a parking lot, which is go most of the time is going to be private property, then yes, you must give way to all traffic you know, road users, pedestrians, those types of things before proceeding out. So yes, it is going to be a yield sign for sure. Uh, Goose, do you have a vehicle with a passenger brake for teaching? Uh, Goose, no, no. 
<laughs> I don't have any vehicles, Goose. Uh, this is everything I do is online. Uh, and if I need vehicles, then I just go and rent them. Uh, so that's basically what I do. So I don't have that. And actually, you know, Goose, the interesting thing about that uh, is that it's always a little weird for me to get in a vehicle that has a passenger brake because I taught CDL for so long and we don't have another brake in CDL. We're, <laughs> you know, the student's way over there. And basically, uh, you know, we can get a hold of the stick and we could pop the parking brakes on, but that's about it. So no, uh, no, 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 no break there. And actually, Goose, the other thing about that was uh, I was talking to Ra to uh, Nelson rather at South Trail when I went and talked to him in Calgary, and he was surprised too. He was asking me that. He's like, "Oh, how many vehicles you got?" Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "No, nah, I don't have any vehicles. I do it all online." <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Jim Bob, uh, Rick, do you think your silly daughter will be back? Uh, my silly daughter. <laughs> <laughs> will not be here tonight because she's not, it's the kids weekend with their mom uh so yeah uh she'll be back next week for sure and she'll pop in and say hi <laughs> uh yeah jt i did cut her off and actually you know that's the weird that's the terrible thing about video i look at the video and i can see my face and i'm just like you know i it's like reading a book you know that i'm just i'm annoyed <laughs> JT, I don't like bureaucrats. Uh, I can't say that I'm a big fan of bureaucrats right now in terms of the lockdown because we all know what the definition of insanity is, right? Insanity is doing the same thing eight times and expecting a different result. Yeah. So we'll just leave it there. Uh, Omar, what's my favorite beer? Uh, Omar, it depends where I live and generally where I live is the... Uh, um, I usually drink the beer, the local beer. So here in Vernon, where I live, I drink 1516, Okanagan Springs, 1516. And the brewery is right down at the bottom of the hill from where I live. So that's the beer that I drink. And when I was in Australia, when I lived in Melbourne, I used to drink Carlton Coldies. I liked Carlton Coldies. So that's, uh, that's my beer of choice currently, you know, and I like craft beers. I don't, I don't particularly like, you know, Labatt's Blue and Budweiser and those types of things. So that's basically it. Uh, Goose, you are a brave dude, man. <laughs> yeah, excellent. And you know, the other thing, Goose, about not having a brake, uh, you know, when you're in a passenger vehicle, uh, you just pop the transmission into neutral and take a hold of the steering wheel. That generally works too, right? So you don't need a brake. But brake story, uh, when I went to work for, I was teaching at the hospital in the van, the first night I was out with paraplegic, didn't have any control of lower extremities, and went around a corner on a left-hand turn, misjudged it, went to nail the brake, and of course the brake didn't work. So yeah, I've had my experiences with brakes too. Uh, JT, this uh, COVID cycle will be over soon. Yeah, it's yeah, it's getting crazy. Uh, DC is jujitsu for everyone. Uh, DC, probably not. <laughs> That's just my personal experience. But anyway, okay. Uh, uh, JT, I really hope you're right. I really do hope you're right that this is going to be gone by July for sure. Uh, ben, uh, how do you get used to a new car by driving on your own? Uh, ben, again, I really recommend you going to the parking lot and doing those slow speed maneuvers. That'll really help you out with getting used to the new car for sure. Uh, Margaret, Rick, you have read the Great Gatsby. Interesting look at driving during the 1920s. Uh, Margaret, I'd have to reread that. I did read it years ago. Uh, but I didn't do that, but um, you're definitely right about interesting look at driving in the 1920s and basically that was a big part of my uh, my graduate work was looking at traffic in the 1920s. I mean, pedestrian deaths in the 1920s, I mean, we think we have high pedestrian deaths now. Pedestrian deaths in the, in the 1920s was absolutely, I mean, traffic deaths were off the chart in the 1920s. Uh, today in you know in kind of developed countries it's it's a it's somewhere around 1.8 2.2 uh traffic deaths per 100 100,000 kilometers driven in the 1920s it was like 12.5 traffic deaths per 100,000 kilometers driven it was like crazy number of traffic deaths and carnage that happened in the 1920s uh, Annie in America, I'm going to take a driving test on Tuesday. Wish me luck. My second time, Annie, you're going to do awesome and you're going to do really well. So good luck with that. Remember to breathe, 
that'll help you to relax when you're going to take your driving test. Uh, Mantis, I have an extra throttle as well as a brake in my training car, and I have heard of that Mantis. And uh, actually, the video that we're doing this week on disabilities, he had a left throttle in the vehicle, which was really weird. I could do the hand controls, but the left throttle really threw me. Uh, Zacharias, hey Rick, I have a regular Class D license. Do I need any type of experience to try to get a CDL, or what do I need specifically? Uh, Zacharias, you just need to go to truck driving school and upgrade your license to a CDL to drive a tractor trailer is what you need to do. Uh, DC, thank you, Rick. I always learn something for, from your videos. You're most welcome, DC. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, <laughs> when they stop green lights, there we go. All right, so if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment down in the comment section. Send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. Congratulations to all those that passed their driver's test in the last week or so. If you have a test coming up this week, good luck on that. Remember to breathe. That'll cause your body to relax and drop back. Let us know how you did. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.